Hi, I'm Mason, and I'm at the National World War II Museum in New Orleans, Louisiana. We're standing in the U.S. Freedom Pavilion at the Boeing Center, where you can see six different planes from World War II overhead. The B-17 Flying Fortress, the B-25 Mitchell Bomber, a Douglas SBD Dauntless, the TBM Avenger, an F4U Corsair, and a P-51 Mustang. Which brings us to today's experiment. How does a plane's design affect its ability to fly? Well, let's find out. These are my friends, Tess and Lucy, and they're going to help us answer today's big question. Here we study problem solving in World War II and how we can learn from it today. Lucy, why do you think all of the planes look so different? Because they have different jobs. Well, it sounds like you two scientists have it covered. I'll leave you to it. You're going to need two pieces of paper. We're going to make different airplanes using the hot dog and hamburger folding method. Then we're going to see how they fly. We're just going to use one piece of paper right now so we can put the other ones away. We're going to fold it the long way and make the two ends touch. Got it? Great. Then we're going to unfold it and take the two corners. Then we're going to meet them to the center crease and fold that down. Then do the same with the other. Good job. Okay, now we're going to take this whole side, this whole side, and meet it into the center crease. Oops, just like that. Fold it down. Good job. And do the same thing on the other side. Make sure the tip stays nice and pointy so it won't get all bumpy in the air. Okay, now we're going to fold the two together so the ends should meet. You ready? There you go. Then we're going to take this whole edge and meet it along the bottom, just like this, to make the wings. And same to the other side. Try to keep that point straight. Don't crumple it. Okay. And then we can take our wings and flip them up. Now we have our hot dog plane. Now we're going to make our hamburger plane. Here's your piece of paper. So now we're going to fold it the other way and meet the two edges right there and make our fold. Good job. All right, let's unfold it. So now we are going to fold the corners in towards the center and it doesn't, there's not really anywhere to put the point yet, but we need to make sure that this opposite corner is completely, it makes a tip. So if we can just eyeball that, it should meet the, wow, you're speedy, it should meet the, cent the center. Just like that, oops, let me adjust mine a little bit. There we go, all right, now let's do the other side. There we go. Now we're going to take the uh, top side of the trapezoid shape that we've made and we're going to fold it over just a couple of times. These side flap wings are going to try to come up, so try to make sure that you put, push them under so they don't start to bubble. So then let's fold it over again. And here we go, we can push this underneath and fold it again. And one last time, ready? There we go. Okay, now we're going to fold it back so the two wings meet. Just like that. Then we're going to make a little crease in the center, so we're going to fold about a half of an inch back the other way 
and press that down. And we're going to do the same to the other side. So now the two wings should be even again. Then we're going to fold the edge of the wings up so we get a nice glide for the, plane, for the airplane. There you go. All right, and we have completed our hamburger airplanes. We are going to record three things. How long they're in the air, how far they go, and which one is most accurate. What do you think will happen, Lucy? I think the hamburger is going to be the longest flight. Okay. And the hot dog, the most distance. All right. And also the hot dog, the most accurate. All right, let's see what happens. Were our predictions right, Lucy? Yes, they were. The hot dog style planes flew further, while the hamburger planes with the fatter wings flew faster but went a shorter distance. This has to do with the four principles of flight. Lift, gravity, thrust, and drag. These principles are constantly in a tug of war with each other. Lift, the force that moves our plane upward, is fighting against gravity, which tries to pull our plane down. Thrust, the force that moves our plane forward, is fighting against drag, air resistance that tries to slow our plane down. For a plane to fly successfully, the lift force must be greater than the weight force of gravity, and thrust must be greater than drag. In World War II, planes had all kinds of different jobs to do. Some had to be fast, some had to fly long distances, and others had to be able to carry lots of supplies or people. Just like with our planes, the way they were designed helped them get the job done. These four principles of flight apply to our planes as well. Can you make your own design? Or add materials to your plane to help it fly better? Or could you add attachments to your plane? The possibilities are endless. And always remember, it's hip to be square. square.